All right, so here we are, folks. We are in the second to last week of classes, and we are finally at the very last section that we will be covering in this class, OK? So 6.3 will round out our Calculus 1 experience. Uh, and 6.3 talks about more volumes of revolution. So the situation where we take the area and we revolve it around an axis and we get a volume we're you know, still going to be doing that but what we're going to look at now is how do we answer those questions that we were not able to answer like example 12 from 6.2 how do we answer those kinds of questions okay and so before we do that let's talk through a quick review of some of the topics we've covered in this uh, in this chapter okay so we started off this chapter I'm talking about area between two curves, all right? So we had area is from A to B of the top curve minus the bottom curve dx, or if it was a uh, sort of sideways looking situation, then we had uh, the integral from C to D of the right curve minus the left curve dy. Now, the space below is actually to draw some pictures that potentially go with that. Uh, but before we draw the pictures, let's talk about predicting our answers for a bit. When we're looking at the area between two curves, all right, so when we're looking at this area, do we expect for there to be pi in our answer? And why or why not? Mm, no, because no circle. Precisely. Exactly. We are looking for situations where maybe there's not a circle. All right. In fact, we're just extending what we learned in chapter five and saying that bottom curve isn't the x axis anymore, or that left curve isn't the y axis anymore. Okay. So um, what I am wanting to do in this space down here is just to draw uh, a couple pictures um, of like, if you see this kind of picture, you might want to think area between two curves and using these formulas, okay? And so in particular, perhaps you have uh, some curve, All right? And if you had a second curve that sort of went like that, okay? If we wanted to find the area of, let's say, um, this region right here, we could sort of section off and we could say, this would be an A, this would be a B. And which way would we draw our purple lines? Up and down or side to side? Up and down, good. And if we drew these up and down, we'll notice that every single one of these purple lines has the pink function on top and the black function on the bottom, all right? So we've got our top curve, and we've got our bottom curve, and we've got our A and B values, and all of our equations, all of these equations in here should have X's in them, okay? So you really want everything to match. Everything's gonna have X. Now, if I wanted to um, think about what it might look like to set something up dy. I'm wondering if someone can maybe draw a diagram of what that looks like. What might that look like? A picture that is just asking you to use dy instead of dx.
Yeah, the lines we draw would be horizontal for sure. Okay. And which region are we trying to find the area of there? Did we change our mind? Um, I accidentally cleared. Oh, okay. Well, I was attempting to say like, if we had a function where okay. the right and left functions were different, but like maybe undo, not clear. Maybe uh, something like this and we'd be taking these lines or no, actually, you know what? <laughs> okay. I, I think this one is hard to draw. Sometimes I cheat and I just kind of draw so, like the same picture that I have over on the left-hand side, but I just draw it sort of like going up and down instead of side to side. And so that might look like uh, maybe you have like a, let's say a line and then maybe you have curve, something like that, where it would be hard to do up and down here because pink to pink, right? That's, we don't want the same color on the top and the bottom. However, if we make the lines horizontal, we might notice that there's always one very clear right function and one that is always very clearly on the left. And so with these, we tend to call the bounds C and D just because they're Y values. Um, but in this case, our right curve would be the pink one and the flat curve would be the left one, okay? Good effort. I, I think it's harder to draw these pictures than we think it might be, okay? Um, but I think sometimes having pictures actually helps us. When we see the picture, we're like, oh, okay, I think this should be dy. Or we see the picture and we're like, oh, this looks more like up and down. I think this should be dx, okay? And we might be able to make a similar note here with our functions that they should have y's in the equation, okay? So that's sort of a throwback to what we did last Monday, talking about area between two curves, all right? Now, as a shorter review of thinking about what we did in 6.2, all right, um, we know that we can sort of have the same idea where we have like dx and dy, okay? Now, if we're thinking about dx, uh, we want to make sure everything has X's in them, all right? But what is the difference between these two versions? Like, how is this one different from this one? What do they tell us? Like, how would we know when to use which one? Maybe that's a better question. How do we know when we have pi r squared? And how do we know when we have pi and then big R squared minus little r squared? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we've got a filled donut and a regular donut, okay? Exactly, so this one we're thinking the cross section is just like a circle. 
But in this case, we actually have an sort of a big radius and then a little radius. We have to account for those, okay? Um, what about the purple lines? Like if we want to use disk and washer method, um, and in this case, we have dx. Can someone tell me what our axis of revolution would be? Axis of revolution. What would our axis of revolution be? Am I revolving this around the x-axis or the y-axis? The x-axis, good, good, good. So axis of revolution will be x-axis. We could also think about this as it has to be horizontal, okay? So for those of you moving further into math, um, it's not always going to be the x-axis. It could be any horizontal line could be considered your, your uh, axis of revolution, okay? But the problem will always specify. Now, tell me about those purple lines. Purple lines will be will have what relationship with your axis of revolution? Exactly, they will be perpendicular to axis of ah, revolution. Will the axis of revolution ever be a whole function? Yes, it's possible. Mm -hmm. We think primarily in terms of situations where they're perpendicular. That's why the lines are all like horizontal or they're all vertical. It is certainly, it adds much more complexity to have sort of like a diagonal situation. So great question, great thinking. All right, let's kind of annotate the right-hand side of this a little bit more as well. What do we notice is the difference between this first volume one and the second volume one? Filled versus regular. So that part is still the same. Great, great, great. Axis of revolution in this case. Yeah, we're going to have an axis of revolution that is going to be along the y-axis, or we can think it'll be some sort of vertical line, okay? Um, purple lines, same relationship, different relationship. What do we think? Purple lines will be related how to that axis of revolution? Yeah, they're going to be perpendicular. All right. So now that we've got sort of a very general look at the first two sections in this chapter, 6.1 and 6.2, let's take a very quick look at a case where we've already seen one, but we have this case where we're going to run into a problem, OK? Um, so if we have our axis of revolution, we know in this case that 
we have a y-axis as our volume, as our axis of revolution. And so if we wanted to use washer method, we would have to draw the lines this way. They would have to go this way. That's how that formula works. But what's the problem with drawing lines like this? We encountered something kind of similar in that example 12. What's the problem with this? It touches the same function twice. Yeah. Well, touching the axis of revolution, though, that really helps us choose between the filled donut or the regular donut. So, like, we could still use it even if we're not touching the axis. Okay, right. Um, but the problem here is, in fact, the fact that this function goes like the right and left function is the same function. The right and the left function is the same function, right? This purple line goes from red curve to red curve, red curve to red curve. And so that makes it really hard because the way the equation is written, we would have to split this into two equations and sort of like, imagine down the middle, how do I write an equation for one side? And then separately, how do I write an equation for the other side? And so that can get very algebraically complicated, okay? So we cannot use washer method here since, Graham said it quite well, it touches the same function twice since the purple lines uh, touch the same function twice. In other words, the, would I wanna use right and left or top and bottom here? Like, if the, should I be using dx or dy if I have a y axis as my axis of revolution? Yeah, I would want to be looking for right and left or, and then dy. Okay, so in other words, the right and left functions are the same. So in a situation like this, it would be very, very challenging. I don't wanna say anything's impossible, but it would be very, very challenging to solve this using washer method, okay? So we will spend today learning about a new method, all right? This method da, 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 is called shell method, all right? But Let's start with sort of this, this top row here, right? We've got six pictures going. Three of these pictures are not what we mean when we say shell method. Oh, you know Marcel the shell? I love Marcel the shell. <laughs> I hope you are all Googling his video right now. No, no, there's a video link. You need to check out his video. I think he has like three videos. They're adorable. Yes. You, you have to see this, okay? So while you were making your air fryer donuts, you can watch Marcel the shell, okay? But when we say shell, I think a lot of us think about shells looking like this, right? Uh, thank you, Megan. Um, like a seashell, you go to the beach, we live in San Diego. You've probably seen some sort of shells at the beach, right? And so when we think about shell method, when someone says shell method, maybe this is what you think. Or if you spend way too much time on the internet, you might think Marcel the shell is what, what you're talking about, okay? But either way, that is unfortunately not what mathematicians had in mind when they said shell method, which is so sad, kind of like the washer that we talked about, right? A lot of us think about a washer like a washing machine, not like that uh, you know, building tool that comes in our putting furniture together kit, right? So, 
Anybody ever seen these kind of things before? I like dogs, so I found a picture with dogs, but you know, like Russian nesting dolls, right? I think they're more traditionally with, mm -hmm, exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay, and so I think they're really fun because they're all kind of the same shape, but they fit inside of each other, right? And so if you look at them all, um, you know, separate like this, but when you put them one inside the other, you can see the adorable little pug here, right? Little pug in the middle, but look at what's happening. We have one, two, three. We have a bunch of not circles though, okay? But we have a few things that are nested inside of each other. And this is sort of like a sideways view, like you are going out and you see these different sort of circle looking things from the top, okay? This bottom row embodies more of what mathematicians meant when they said shell method, okay? Now, if you were to approximate the shape of these dogs with a mathematical or geometric shape, what would you say that they're most similar to? Are they like cubes? Are they like spheres? Ah, cylinders, okay. So, shell method, okay. Shell method is really maybe better thought of as cylinder method, okay. Nobody calls it that. Don't go out there and call it cylinder method, please. Nobody says that. But in our brains, we might want to translate shell method as cylinder, okay? And so this is where, uh, let's see how the drawing skills sort of work today. Sometimes they work better than other days, but let's give it a go. So we might have a situation where we have sort of like one really big cylinder, like really wide cylinder. Uh, and if we're thinking like the nested dogs below, we might have sort of another cylinder inside of here. And then we might have a little cylinder inside of that one. Okay. So when we're thinking shell method, whoa, sorry. When we're thinking shell method, we're really thinking cylinders. And specifically, we're having a bunch of cylinders that are nested inside of each other. Okay. Just like these dogs. We can sort of put one inside of the other. But you see how there's like space in between the dogs here? When we do the cylinder method, we're imagining these cylinders are so close together that they're basically touching each other. There's no space at all, okay? You might think about it like um, a roll of paper towels. Right? So each outside sheet would be like another cylinder. And then when you get to the inside, there's like the paper towel, the cardboard tube in the middle. Okay. So when we're thinking cylinder method, we're thinking that the cylinders are as thin as a piece of paper, even thinner. They're like very, very thin. Okay. So even though these dog dolls are like the, the actual thickness of each dog is not that thick. When we think about cylinder method, it's like even thinner, okay? Even thinner than that. Okay, so let's see how this works and how it might be a little bit different, okay? Let's 
take a look at this diagram. So this diagram is really similar to some stuff that we've seen before, where we have some function, we have an axis of revolution, we draw a line. Now, if this was the diagram and I said washer method, what would be my axis of revolution? Right. So if I said washer, what would my axis of revolution be? Yeah, because this would be my purple line. And if I want to use washer method, our axis of revolution has to be perpendicular to it. And this purple line, so we would be using dx, we would have an axis of revolution of the x axis. And um, what does that purple line represent in this case? Right, when we think back to when we did like the ones with the rectangles and the triangles, and we knew that these purple lines sort of represented something. What does this purple line represent? It might be helpful to consider whether we're looking at a regular donut or a filled in donut here. Okay, so looking at this picture, is this a regular donut or a filled in donut? <laughs> it is a filled in donut. And so the purple line the purple line represents the radius, oh, the radius of one slice or one circle. I know, same here. I pretty much always get the, the filled donuts as well. Okay. All right. So if I had said washer, that's what this would represent. Okay. However, if I say shell method, okay things get tricky, okay? So when we talk about shell method, what's happening is this line that we draw is actually telling me that I will still be using dx okay however my axis of revolution is this okay my axis of revolution is this We don't want to think donuts, but we want to think cylinders. And the purple line represents the height of one shell okay the purple line represents the height of one shell and remember a shell is basically like a cylinder okay so we'll see a better picture on the other page but do you remember how i like to draw the symmetry 
So if I were to sort of draw in the symmetry piece here, I would get something like that. And I would have some something like this. Okay. And now the purple line is the height of a cylinder. And so I would sort of connect these pieces so I could see the top circle and the bottom circle. Okay. Now I just want to clarify one thing though. When we draw the cylinder, okay, so like this cylinder right here, the reason why we call it a shell and not a cylinder, um, if you've ever heard the phrase, that you're just like a shell of your former self, like you're not really yourself anymore. The shell represents sort of like the outer layer, right? Or if you think about, um, yes, so we will talk about why it's DX, okay? That's where it starts to get tricky. That's an excellent question though. So I just wanna clarify this picture and then we'll go on and answer your question. This is not a solid cylinder. It's literally like you took like just the, the label of a soup can and only looked at that, that's what we're looking at, okay? So it has space on the inside, it has space on the outside. And the reason why it has space is because there's a lot of other cylinders. We're just drawing one of them, but there's like a lot of other cylinders and they're all so thin that they touch each other, okay? So we are not looking at the volume of the shell, okay? We're not looking at the volume of the shell. This is one shell. I could draw other shells, just like I could draw how I draw, drew a lot of purple lines before. I can draw more than one shell. So for continuity's sake, Let's say I picked this as a purple line. Then to draw the shell, I would have a reflection. And then this one would be like a little shorter and has a smaller radius. So this one is literally just the one that touches right here it doesn't, it's not filled in on the inside. Yes, we're looking at the surface of the shell, okay? So that's what I mean when I say they're really, really thin is that it's not a solid cylinder. It's literally like if you took a bunch of uh, paper towel tubes and tried to put them one inside the other, that's really what we're looking for. Yes, 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 okay? All right, so. Let's uh, move away from Judy's shoddy artwork and let's look at some computer generated images, which I think uh, definitely show things a lot better, okay? So if we think about what we were looking at before, and maybe I can sort of put these on the same screen so we can look at it that way, okay? So I only drew two shells in my picture. I had sort of like one sort of in the inside and one on the outside. But the reality is we're looking at an, an infinite number of shells, okay? And just like Ethan said, we're looking at the area of each shell, okay? Um, how many of you have ever uh, peeled a, a label off of a can? Anybody ever peel a label off of a can before? Or like a yogurt container? Okay, that's such a weird random thing to ask, right? But when you peel that off, what shape was it? Ah, I see it. Yeah, when you peel that off, it's a rectangle, right? And so that's why even though a cylinder is curved, they, people chose to use a cylinder because when you unravel it, you get a rectangle. And rectangles, we can find the area of, we just have to find the area of all the rectangles and then add them all up together. 
Okay. So let's take a look at how the equations are going to be different. Okay, I think this chart will be helpful as you study to keep track of like, how do we know when to use what? Okay, but let me add one more diagram, and that is this. So let's say we've got a cylinder, we unravel it, and we end up with a rectangle. Okay, so we we unravel that label and we get a rectangle. It has a height that we'll call H. What is this side in relation to the radius of your cylinder? That's a tricky question. Ah, okay, okay. 2 pi r. Gosh, that formula looks really familiar. 2 pi r. 2 pi r. What is 2 pi r a formula for? Uh, be more specific. What about a circle? Ooh, okay, okay. 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle. It's the circumference of the top of that circle, of the cylinder. So when we unravel it, it becomes the length of our rectangle, okay? So even though we're not slicing things into circles, our answer will actually have pi in them because this very special rectangle, how can I represent the area of this rectangle? Knowing what you know about rectangles, what's the area of that one? There we go. We're going to take the bottom, we're going to multiply it by the side, right? Length times width, except 2 pi r times h. Okay. So let's kind of go back to the top for a moment before we fill in this chart. We're thinking cylinders. Cylinders like dogs that come in all different sizes, but mostly the same shape of a cylinder. Okay. They can be sort of nested inside one another. However, the purple line we draw when we are using shell method, this purple line is actually now parallel to my axis of revolution. It's not perpendicular, it's parallel. And each one of those purple lines, wherever I draw it, gives me the height of that cylindrical shell. I have an infinite number of them and they're so, so thin. They're so thin that I can imagine each one being unraveled to be like a flat piece of paper, like a rectangle. And knowing what we know about area, we can say that the area of each one is going to be 2 pi rh. Most of the area formulas when we're dealing with rectangles don't have a pi in them, but this one is special. It does because the base comes from the circumference of the circle. That's why there's a two pi r, okay? And so this picture might be sort of the best one of all where we can see that we have an infinite number of shells and they're all nested inside of each other. And every single one of them is gonna have an area of two pi r h. Okay. 
So this chart. Let's talk about our disk and washer method and our shell method, comparing DX and DY, okay? So we know, da, da, da. we know that disk and washer method, we wrote down a few important things earlier. Our axis of revolution is going to be the X axis. Um, that our slices are going to be either this, either a circle or a washer, all right? So circle or a washer. And these slices are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. Okay, those are the things that we wrote down earlier. It's always helpful to write it down one more time. In contrast, let's see what's different about shell method. Okay, so shell method, our axis of revolution, if I have a DX at the end, is actually going to be the y axis. The slices are going to be cylindrical shells. Okay. And again, that's not filled in. It's just like a very, very thin cylinder. And these slices are parallel to the axis of revolution, okay? Now, I can just throw that down on the paper and be like, follow these rules, you'll be good to go. But um, Thea, I think, brought up a very excellent question, which is, why is this along the, why is the uh, axis of revolution the y-axis and why is it dx? And so one thing I want us to think about is we have to be able to define the radius and the height of each and every shell. So if I think about the radius, is my radius going along the x-axis or the y-axis? And I think about the shells. Is the radius going along the x-axis or along the y-axis? Maybe I should ask a better question or a different question. If we look back at this less delightful diagram and we look at this, would you say the radius is an X value or a Y value? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an X value. What about this radius? It's different, but is it an X value or a Y value? It's still X, okay? And if I drew an even bigger one out here, I know it's different, but they're all X value. And that right there is the reason why we say DX. We wanna define the radius with an X value, okay? We wanna define the radius as an X value. The height then is just take that number, plug it into the function, just the Y value, okay? So note to self that the X value, nope, 
that's not what I wanted to say, that the radius is an x value. And that's why we have dx. It's easier to count along the x value. Whereas in the disk and washer method, we wanted the y values or that height. So that's why we needed equations that had x's in there. Okay. Excellent. Great, great question. All right. Let's fill in this last part of the chart. All right. And then um, let's see. So. Uh, let's do this. If I have, uh, if I have disk and washer method, dx, but now I want to change it to be dy, you tell me, how do I modify this, these three points? Like what changes, what stays the same? If I have sort of a sideways picture, what changes from dx to dy for a washer method and what stays the same? Perfect, I love it. This is indeed now the y-axis. What about the other two pieces, the slices and their relationship to the axis of revolution? Do those change or do those stay the same? They stay the same, I love it, I love it. Okay, so you know what? Let's use the technology we have. Let's grab this. Call it a day. Okay. So, um, Christina, you really identified the change really well that the y axis is what changes when we change from dx to dy for the disk and washer method. Okay. What are our thoughts about what changes versus what stays the same for the shell method when we go from dy and dx? Like, what do we think about our axis of revolution? Let's see, axis of revolution. Ah, well, it used to be the y-axis for this one. So now it's gonna be the x-axis, all right? So because it was the y-axis in this uh, orange case, it's now gonna be the x-axis. Um, what about all the other information? Slices, relationship to the axis of revolution? those stay the same. And what about that last statement? Radius is an X value. What are our thoughts about that? Yeah, we do want to change that to radius is not an X value, but now radius is a Y value. All right, and it might even be helpful to draw our cylinder sideways, that our shells are now kind of like going this way. Like the normal way that like a roll of toilet paper hangs on the, um, on the little thing by the bathroom or the way that some, but not all paper towel holders, like the kinds under your counter, underneath your cabinets, those sort of hang so that they're horizontal. 
Okay. All right. So let's do this. Um, I think we've done a lot of food for thought. I would love to take Monday to work through examples. All right. Now I know that we have a quiz due, right? So what do we do about that? Um, my suggestion is let's make the quiz be due on Tuesday of next week. How does that sound to folks? That would be a due date of Tuesday. So quiz 15 would now be due on Tuesday, May 25th. Now that does mean it will be right up against that exam, exam five, your final, well, your last exam um, is on Wednesday, May 26th, and it is during our regular class time, okay? So we have some changes to the last week. Please make sure that you are aware of those. Those should all be in this week's La Semana so you can see uh, when things are due. But we'll, let's change quiz 15 to be due on Tuesday, May 25th. Um, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to try applying some of this to some of the quiz questions we haven't gone over yet, just to try and see like what your intuition is versus you know what we do on Monday and how that lines up. Okay. Uh, yes, Megan. So the exam is on a Wednesday. I know that's so weird. I don't know that that's actually happened for us, but the exam will be during regular class hours. In fact, I think it will open at 9 a.m. and close at noon. Okay, so we'll have that same block of time uh, during class. Uh, I bumped it a half an hour earlier on the start time so we could get three hours in instead of two and a half because I think these can be kind of long and you will have the full three hours to take it. However, you are expected to take it during that time. So I know in the past, we've had a chance to sort of pick our starting time, but everybody's starting at 9 a.m. Everybody's done by noon, okay? Uh, I'm happy to do office hours earlier if that would be helpful for folks. Um, so if we want to do like an eight to nine, I'm happy to do that. Um, you guys can let me know and then I will, I'll do whatever, whatever works. Okay. Uh, 